Hello friends, happy Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Why not? Not a roadway ramble, obviously. It's uh, early morning on Wednesday. I thought I'd uh, make up for uh, the fact that I was not smoking Best Brown Flake on Sunday. I, Best Brown Flake was the choice of the, uh, the week on the live stream on Friday. And because I was breaking in a new pipe on Wednesday, I didn't want to smoke it. So, yeah, well, on, I was breaking in a new pipe on Sunday. I didn't want to smoke it. It's early still. <laughs> so I've got my Wednesday basket pipe here. Basket billiard. Not really a Wednesday basket pipe. Just a basket billiard. And uh, I have it loaded up with some Sam Galwith Best Brown Flake. And... If you're not familiar with the stuff, it comes in these nice, beautiful, shreddy looking flakes. And yeah, let's uh, find a lighter. Using the hippie lighter, sorry. This was largely unplanned. So this is right out of the tin. Still can't identify that note. Right out of the tin, I just ball it up and push it in and let it expand. Uh, what my friend Tim Fournier calls the booger method. And uh, yeah, it seems to work with flakes in general. Get it lit. Let it go out because it will. Then you tamp using your buttons for your purchase tamper. Uh, light pressure, light circular motion. This kind of creates a little layer of charcoal on the toe. And if you do that, you usually can keep it burning. Uh, at least that's been my experience with flakes. Now, with me talking, I will almost certainly have to relight several times. Nice creamy smoke, Big Dave. Uh, yeah, so this is a straight Virginia. It's a flu cured Virginia's and has no added topping. Yet there is something there and this is interesting. It's very hard to pin down. It's a, it's very evident when you first light it and it goes away quickly. And I really can't describe it. It's, to me, it's a little liquory, uh, sweet. But I can't, I can't place it. It's got some other notes, aspects to it. What's interesting about this is that according to the literature that I've seen on Best Brown Flake and to our friend Doug Owen, there is no added topping. It's actually just the atmosphere of the Lakeland District and the fact that they never clean the knives in uh, at the same McGough factory and you know the processing equipment and everything is saturated with all that Lakeland stuff. Some of it just rubs it off. Got a mustiness to it. Didn't quite get a lit there. It's got a mustiness to it which is uh, not bad but again this all goes away pretty quickly. It's got a lot of nice Virginia flavor to it. Um, sweet, hay-like uh, Virginia lighter. Not, not the dark stoved sort of stuff that I tend to gravitate to, but it's not tangy either. Uh, 
Not something I'm going to chase, but nice enough. Glad I, glad I tried it. Having some uh, 8 o'clock coffee. And just getting the day started here. So I've uh, started work. I'm doing a lot of uh, data analysis programming lately, and I have this program that I just kick off and it runs for an hour sometimes. And I've been struggling with it. It's funny, the simplest things. I spent months writing this code. I'm sorry, this is going to get a little geeky, but. And it runs perfectly. You know, it runs perfectly well on. A local computer but I have to analyze really big data sets and it, the computer just doesn't have the memory to do that so I put the code onto a um, high-performance cluster basically a supercomputer and I run it there and that has the resources to actually manipulate these large data sets well that's kind of like if I write, write a program on my computer and I send it to you and you run it on your computer but your computer is a whole lot more powerful sounds simple right well it's not because I, I, I wrote this in Python and Python like many languages allows you to bring in import uh, libraries of functions and there's functions for making graphs and there's functions for manipulating matrices and you know all this sort of stuff and it's great because you don't have to write that stuff uh, you know you, could, you, you can take instead of 30 lines of code to manipulate data in a certain way uh, let's just say you wanted to uh, plot uh, a scatter plot so instead of writing 30 lines of code to do that you can just write plot scatter and the name of the variables and bang it works because in this library that you brought in is that 30 lines of code with a tag on it that says this is when you say plot scatter this is what you do so it's really a great helpful uh, thing but there's all these versions and the versions that are running on my local machine are not the same as the versions that are running on the on the high performance cluster. So I'm getting all these errors now, all these version errors, and I have to go through each package one by one and try to figure out what's the bad actor. And every time I make a change, I have to launch it and wait and see what happens. And yeah, it's fun. But it's worth it. There's no other way to get the, the information out of the data that I'm trying to get. Okay, that's enough geeky stuff. It's raining today. Uh, Going to have thunderstorms off and on all day. I got the yard all cleaned up this morning and ready for the lawn guy. Uh, he didn't show up and I thought oh that's funny he's normally here uh, and then the rain started and I said oh, okay we'll be here tomorrow probably so I have to get the yard all cleaned up again tomorrow uh, such is life I've been having fun uh, <laughs> off on another tangent another rabbit hole so As most of you guys know, I, I, well, let me, let me back up a bit. So I've been playing around with making pipes and as I'm doing this, I, I wound up thinking I probably need a bigger leaf. And my good buddy, Eric, uh, who's really a, a wonderful guy, not, not not Eric, not any of the Eric's you know, this is an Eric who uh, is a viewer, but he, he, does, he doesn't make videos, uh, lives about 20 minutes from, from where I live. He's a wood turner, he's, he's actually a very good woodworker, 
and uh, he had a lathe that he was looking to, to sell, and so this is going back, gosh, over a year now, I think. And, you know, I said, oh, sure, it was a great deal and uh, perfect size for me and all that. So I buy the lathe. And, okay, fantastic. I got, I got a new lathe. I mean, well, eh, my sharpening setup isn't really what it needs to be. So I go and buy a new grinder and sharpening jig and all that stuff. And then I think, well, I really need a place to store all this stuff. So I start building a cabinet. You've seen some updates on the cabinet. Well, that was going along slow but sure and then we got this sidewalk project that came up and as part of the sidewalk project we decided to take down a mulberry tree and I said to to Eric uh, you know is mulberry any good for turning and he said oh yeah it's great wood for turning you should you should make some bowls I've never turned a bowl. So I said, well, how about I give you some mulberry and you give me a lesson in bowl turning and he was you know, more than happy to do it and frankly he would have done it without the mulberry. Uh, when he looked at the mulberry I don't think he was that excited with it. It's smaller than what he normally deals with. Anyway, so I went over there on Saturday and had a great time. Spent. Uh, I don't know how much time, five or six hours, uh, just turning and learning, and I, I just walked away with so much information, and it was really fantastic of Eric to, to help me out like this. So now, one of the things I learned was my chainsaw was too dull, so I had to sharpen the chainsaw and I'm tuning that up, and I don't have the sharpening jig set up yet because I've been working on the cabinet for it so now I gotta get the sharpening jig set up because I need to turn the bowls because you have to do this when the wood is green because once it dries out it starts to crack and everything and you... so now I'm a bowl turner someday I'm gonna get back to pipes someday But you know, it doesn't matter. I'm I'm having fun doing it, and that's that's really all that matters. And uh, keeps me keeps me out of the bars, right? I was talking to a guy last night. We we're talking about fishing. I barely know this person. And somehow we got into ice fishing, and the fact that ice fishing is just an excuse to drink. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, I'm not really a, a drinker. I, I grew up in a household where there just really wasn't a lot of alcohol around. And I very, very rarely have a drink. And I said, well, I'm kind of the same way. I didn't tell him this, but I hadn't always been, but I'm, I'm kind of the same way. So if most most of the time I'll have one drink in a week. This guy looked at me slightly shocked. And I thought he was going to say, oh, that's not much at all. And what he said was, wow, if I have four or five drinks in a year, that's a lot for me. <laughs> Oh, great. <laughs> now I'm an alcoholic, according to this man. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, everything is relative, I suppose. But, of course, extremes are never good. Who recently said moderation in all things, including moderation? Some somebody just within the past couple of days said that to me. I thought it was an interesting quote. One that I haven't I run into it, I hadn't processed it. 
moderation in all things, including moderation. Well, anyway, folks, I need to get back to banging my head against uh, Python and Linux. And uh, got to get into work later today. So hope you have a great Wednesday and uh, enjoy the rest of the week. We'll be back on Friday with a, a live stream and uh, yeah, just usual shenanigans. And if you don't see me there, you'll see me on Sunday. Maybe I'll have some bowls to show you. I, I probably won't. I'm working on it though. <laughs> All right, folks, take care. Have a great day and we'll chat again soon. Bye now.